Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Yes, I'm back. Never know when I'm coming back on the weekends. Because I always plan not to do a live, but it has been so much going on. And I like to try and keep up with everything. So, I, was, I could have got these documents last night. But I wasn't going to come back online and download everything and then all that so i got them this morning downloaded them and i've gone through them as best as i can in the time i had before coming live <clears throat> and there's a lot of information <laughs> i was gobsmacked by some of the information i really was so We're going to look at the the exhibits, what they say, what they say is the exhibits, okay? Oh, God, it's windy today. 
is that coming up? Thank you. Right, let's get this to the top because there is so much info. So, so much info. There's 320 pages in this one, but a lot of them are pictures. But there is like the uh, statements that the defendants, is it the defendants? I'm not sure now what they call them. Right, what the defendants. Right, it starts off with just the information about the case itself, what happened when he went missing. Everything, what the law enforcement doing, everything, okay? So it starts off with all that. Now, this is, in, this is good if you want to make a timeline. If you want to make a timeline, this is where you get your information from here. Right? Because it gives you the dates. Everything of when what happened, right? Well, we're gonna jump past Sam if I can get this to flipping work. Right, we're gonna jump past all this because we'll be here days if I was to read all that again, and we all know. If you don't know Sebastian Rogers, if you're just coming into this case, if you don't know Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic lad who went missing, was reported missing on the 26th of February, 2024. A wide-scale search was put out involving horseback riders, uh, law enforcement, feet, boots on the ground, drones, Divers, you name it, they had it all there. And after, I think it was eight days, they scaled the search back. Right, now this is just, if you want to, and you, you can get this, in, I've got these files, and they're on my Discord. Uh, let's open my Discord up, I'll get you the link. Right, I'll get you the link for my Discord. If you want these, di these documents, they are on there, they are, I have not edited these documents, I don't think I have. And you know what, I think I've just closed the documents down that I was editing. Oh, don't say that. Don't say I've done that. And I will put it in chat for you. Hold on, let me get to my comments. Uh, hold on, I'll pin it to the top of my page. Okay. Just got to go pin it. So if anyone wants this link, it's in the comments. I'll also put it on the highlight on the page as well. But I have got the documents in there, and it's under Sebastian Rogers. So let me just do this. No, it's not letting me do it. It's not letting me do it. I'll just put it up on as a banger. Right, 
Alright, so if you want these documents, go to my Discord, and under Sebastian Rogers, you will find those those documents, okay? Right, let's get back to this. So, as I said, the beginning is all about the news reports, everything, alright? Who to contact. So, a lot of it is just that, at the beginning. There's 19 pages of it all took up so far. So, we're just scribing, scribing. Right, all about the case of Navy, everything. Oh god, there's so many pages. I should have, I should have wrote down the pages or where I wanted to start from. Because there's so many. But like I said, the if you want the, if you want this information you can get it on my Discord account. All free, not being charged for anything. It's public information, so it's all Right, so a lot of it is just about the beginning and all the news people. What? Ah, right. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Law offices are. Just, let's make sure you can see this. Yes. Law offices of Joseph Lesniak, LLC. Right, there's the address. At Night Media. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in the Delaware County Court of Common Pleas. Well, I don't know what they mean by please. But. At Night Media, LLC, a Pennsylvania limited liability company. Train Dog Chapman. 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 Chapman an individual, Seth Rogers, an individual, Tony L. Mathis, an individual, Andre, Andra Griffin, an individual, Brittany Nicole Jackson, an individual, Christine O'Donnell, Donald, Christina O'Donnell, and Julie Valentini, Valenti, an individual, Hong Exile, an individual, and Nick Lehat. Whatever his name is, I'm not going to pronounce it. An individual. Plaintiffs. Now, it's got a case number designated not non confidential. Declaration of Seth Rogers, father of missing teenagers, Sebastian Rogers, Drake Rogers. Right? So, this is a declaration by Seth Rogers. And the def plaintiffs. The defendants are Stephanie Jo Trude, an individual, and Jessica Ling Seng, an individual. Right. Oh, do I saved it? Right. Declaration of Seth Rogers. Seth Rogers being duly sworn, according to law, hereby dispose and affirm the following. Seth Rogers. Residing at I Black Dam, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, pursuant to 18 PACS 4904, relating to unsworn falsification to authorities, that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Hold on, it's going a little bit too far then. Right, two, I am Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. From the very beginning, I've been certain in my gut that my ex-wife, Kate Proudfoot, and her husband, Chris Proudfoot, are involved in the disappearance of my son, Sebastian. Chris asked me to get our stories straight. Wow, 
how can he get his story straight? He was at work. So he's got no story. Well, his story is, I was at work from 6.30 or 7pm the night before to 7am the following morning on video camera 24 hours the whole time because he works at a prison. They can't afford not to have their cameras working, right? So Chris asked me to get our stories straight about Sebastian, hmm. implying that he wanted me to lie. Well, yeah, well, what would you lie about? You was at work. When I refused, they both cut off all communications with me. Oh, this must have been later on in the, in the uh, disappearance. Because that's when they cut off all. They wouldn't speak to me. When I refused, they both cut off all communication with me. They've shown no interest in finding our son, and their behaviour only deepens my belief that they're hiding something. And we all believe that. We all believe, well, we all believe that a part, part of you, I will say. Not everyone believes that, that but the majority of people do. That's just in my opinion. I will put this up, first of all. I didn't put this up, so I'm going to put it up now. Before we go any further. Before we go any further, I'll put this up. You must be 18 years and older to be watching this. Everything said is allegedly, and in my opinion. Please do your own checks. Do not use YouTubers' creators' names in chat. I think just by saying something, we can get the gist of who you are talking about, but please do not put their names in the chat. Okay? So please do your own checks. And like I said, I always say, it's allegedly and in my opinion only. Why? No one else's. So let's get back to that. Every day that goes by without their help only makes me more certain that they know, they know more than they're saying about what happened to Sebastian. I think they know more than what they're saying, in my opinion. For seven long months, I've been living the nightmare of a missing child. I should imagine it's be, be a bit like Groundhog Day, the film, where you wake up and it's the same thing again. Go to bed, wake up, the same thing again the next day. It's never ending. Every day that goes by without their help only makes me more certain that they know more than they're saying about what happened to Sebastian. For seven long months, I've been living the nightmare of a missing child. It's something no parent should ever have to face. No, they shouldn't. No parent should have to face this. The pain is unbearable, and it's made even worse by the fact that the very people who should have cared, Kate and Chris, have turned their backs on me. Instead of searching for Sebastian, they've aligned themselves with people more interested in tearing me down than finding my son. I feel like I've been, I'm being blocked at every turn by the, by the people and their group of online creators. They spread rumours, attacked me publicly, and worked to dis discredit me. It feels like a coordinated effort to silence me and shift the blame rather than find, help find my boy. Time for blame is when we get Sebastian home. That's when the blame game can start if you want to go down, down that route. In the early days of searching for Sebastian, I entered into a relationship with Michaela Cleveland. I was broken and grieving, and she seemed to offer comfort, but her intentions weren't genuine. In early May, while staying at my apartment, Michaela sent confidential CPS reports, documents concerning my son's safety, 
if I have more knowledge. Wow. So she's the one. Apparently, allegedly, allegedly, who leaked. She like teamed up with Austin Trevor Sweet, aka T Rev. <laughs> and together, they use those stolen reports as leverage to control me. They even threatened to release their private documents publicly. Wow. Allegedly. <coughs> So, those are just two people named already, but they're not named in the lawsuit that they're going ahead with now, but they could be. The way Michaela, T-Rev and their group of creators, people like Barbecue Lady, Granny's Watching, Queen Bee and JLR, exploited my pain for the game is nothing short of cruel. I don't see how JLR did. He was there with you. You know what I mean? He was there walking around with you. He backed off when Kaiser Navy came in on the scene because of the way he was treated. So he backed off. But like I said, he's got other cases he's been looking into. A lot of other cases, other work he's been looking into. So... The attacks against me haven't stayed online. They followed me to work where I serve as a deputy at Davidson County Jail. Be barbecue lady, along with others like Granny's Watching, Queen Bee and Cluminati, have spread rumours that I'm involved in the murder of a child and that I'm a... Hold on, hold on, I'm... I thought I'd black that out. Obviously, I haven't saved anything. It hasn't saved anything. I've just clicked out of it. So, and now I'm a P. These lives have put my life in danger at work. I work in the maximum security s section of the jail. Wow. And if word gets out about these false ac accusations, I know I could be stabbed or killed by inmates. Yeah, it could. Trude even accused one of my co-workers of being under investigation for time card fraud, trying to stir up trouble in my workplace. That's, that's ridiculous, come on. Now this is all allegedly, remember, these attacks aren't random, they're part of a coordinated effort to ruin my life and make it impossible for me to do my job safely. I've long suspected Kate and Chris Pratt are hiding something about Sebastian's disappearance. Their refusal to help and their cold behaviour only makes me more certain of it. Early on, Stephanie Jo True came to me in person, offering to help. But after she met with me, with me, with, but after she met with the Pratt folks, her behaviour changed. It's like she switched sides and her attacks on me and those helping me became more aggressive. This makes me wonder what exactly was discussed during that meeting. In addition to the private people, there's a whole group of online creators who have made it their mission to destroy my life. People like Ricky Smith, open brackets, Cluminati, close brackets, Stephen Fisher, SF Investigates, and Stephen Crabtree have used their platforms to spread lies about me, calling me a child killer and a P. These are dangerous accusations and I'm taking a toll on me both personally and professionally. Well, it would, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? Come on. Stephen Crabtree didn't even have a YouTube channel before my son went missing. He created his channel specifically to capitalise on my tragedy, aligning himself with Clooming at any others in this online group. This gang of creators has turned my pain into their entertainment and profit. I don't watch their channels. I did at first go over to Cluminati, but then I stopped. I stopped. 
To make work matters worse, the people recently posed for a photo with Ricky and Stephen, smiling as if they were all in one kind, some kind of sick joke. They pretended to search for Sebastian, but they actually felt more like a mockery than a genuine effort. A true and copy, correct copy of the photo taken on or around September the 29th, 2024, depicting Katie and Chris people. Depicting Kate and Chris people alongside Clooming at it, her spouse or romantic partner and Steve Fisher SF investigates. It is attached here to as Exhibit 1 and incorporated by reference herein. The threats haven't stopped. I've been told by people connected to the people that there will be consequences for anyone who speaks out against them. Chris even told my ex-wife that if I opened my mouth about what I knew, it won't ever open again. We heard that. We did hear that. It feels like they're using their power and connections to silence me. I don't know how much longer I can fight this battle on my own. Well, that's it. He can't fight this battle on his own. This is... This is just a father who wants to find his son and bring him home. You know what I mean? Your Honor, I'm just a father trying to find his son. I've been betrayed by people I thought I could trust. And I'm fighting against a coordinated group of individuals who seem more interested in destroying me than helping find my boy. I don't have the resources or the power that like these people do. But I do have a father's love for my son and that's what keeps me going. Every second that ticks by, my son's, life, my son's life hangs in the balance. If he's still out there, every day that passes without finding him could mean the difference between life and death. And I can't help but feel like the p folks and these online creators are helping time run out on him. Their silence, their lies, their attacks, they're not just bystanders. They're accomplices to, whatever happen, ha what, to whatever's happening to my boy. If my son dies out there alone, they'll have blood on their hands. The people, the step parents who should have helped, they've turned into silences. The in laws, the ones who could have supported me, have turned into outlaws. And these online creditors have gone from talent stories to being killers in their own way. Wow. They destroy my family bit by bit, and it's time for this to end. I'm exhausted, I'm heart heartbroken, and I just want to, someone to listen to help me bring my son home. This is my truth, and I hope you understand how much I need you to help to find Sebastian and hold these people, those responsible, accountable. I am fully prepared to testify under open provide detailed accounts of these organised and sustained attacks, including the incitement of harassment and violence. Continuous threats to my life and the severe emotional and professional harm I've enjoyed as a direct result of their actions. Seth Rogers swear and or affirm and verify under penalty of perjury under the laws of the United States of America to US USC 1746 to unsworn declarations under penalty of perjury and all that. It just says all. Codes, right? That the foregoing is true and correct. I underline stand that false statements hearing are made subject to the penalty penalties of perjury in ever applicable law. Seth Rogers. SF investigates. This is obviously, obviously uh, uh, a screenshot of something. Completing another day searching and mapping areas of interest in the Sebastian Rogers case, I want to thank Stephen, Cletus, Clue, Crimson, Craig, Chris, and Kay for all their help over the past week. 
I will be leaving in the next two hours to assist with the search for missing flood victims in eastern Tennessee, but I will return to Hendersonville within the next two weeks. So Sebastian, to both sides, we vow to continue searching for you and seeking answers. Hmm. Now I need to go blah, 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 right? There's one, the one picture, okay? And this is the picture close up, closer up. Chris, Katie, Clue, her partner, and I think that would be SF Investigates, because he's the one with the drone, right? Now those, I don't know if they was out searching that day. There's a big flipping walking manhole there that they're searching there. You know what I mean? Did they? They don't look like they've got on the hands and knees in that tunnel searching. Anyway, I don't know. I can't say they did. I can't say they didn't. It's my opinion. They look very clean. Being as a good, a great big manhole sort of thing here. I'd be close. I'd literally have overalls on. Right? And I'd be crawling through them tunnels. Then whatever. Right, exhibit eleven. Ah, love. Blah 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 blah. Come around, Pennsylvania. This is declaration of Tony Al Mathis, national spokesperson of Seth Rogers. Right. I'm going to leave this up a sec, give you a chance to... Oh, God, what am I doing? Oh, because I've just got to go and get a drink. So I'll leave this up, I'll give you a chance to read this yourself first. Right. Read that and then I'll be right back. I've just got to get a drink. Okay, I'm back. Right. It says, let's get my mic in place. It says, Tony Al Mathis being duly sworn according to law, he by dispose and affirm the following. Tony Al Mathis residing at declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania pursuant to 18 ICS 4904 relating to unsworn falsification to authorities that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. Before I ever got involved in the search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, life was simple. My wife and I lived a quiet life in Oklahoma, where we worked hard and kept to ourselves. We didn't ask for trouble, and we never thought that by trying to have a family find their missing son, we'd be dragged into something so ugly. It all changed on May the 1st, 2024, the day I began representing Seth Rogers as his national spokesperson. What I thought was a straightforward act of kindness, helping a father search for his father, turned into a nightmare. Ever since we've been living under a dark cloud, facing attacks and accusations that seem to come from every corner, the harassment has been relentless and it's hard to even recognise the life you know. Yes, you know. Right, okay. I don't 
particular like turning a I don't. But if he if this is as I said from the day one, if this is what Seth wants, then that's Seth's choice. I would not personally go out and attack a bloke. Personally. Or his wife or his family. Or no. Verbally or anything. I wouldn't. Right. It wasn't long before I realised that some people didn't want this case to be solved. <laughs> I think a lot of us, a lot of the YouTubers, realised this after about, what, three, four weeks, once they moved away from the house down to wherever it was their five-wheeler was going. I think they we realised then. This case to be solved. Chris and Kate and Chris people, Sebastian's mother and stepfather seem more interested in discrediting those of us who were trying to help and actually find Sebastian. The codes are up to a bunch of online personalities. Folks, I didn't know existed until they started coming after me. I've been cu being accused of all sorts of things, from being a racist to having a criminal past, and these rumours didn't come, just come out of nowhere. It felt like there was coordinated efforts with the people standing by while their creators did their dirty work. It's hard to believe that people who claim to care about a missing child could turn around and support their very folks, folks who were tearing down those who were trying to help. Hmm. The harassment took an even darker turn with Stephanie Jo Trude, better known online as BB, Barbecue, BBQ. Barbecue Lady decided to make her own personal target. In a recorded video, she flat out said, It is my expletive mission. Right, it is my. Ex that's been blocked out. She's probably said. Ex something else, mission to take Tony the blank down. This wasn't just an offhand remark, it was a promise, and ever since she made it, she's done everything she can to drag my name through the mud. She spread lies about me, accused me and my wife of infidelity, and even saying we're swingers. Well, if you are, you are. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? But if you're not, and you don't like that, you're not into that sort of thing, then it's not nice to be said. But there's nothing wrong. But it's not nice, it can be hurtful. Oh, um, if someone had said that about me and my husband, I'd go, swingers, are you, are you, are you too sure about that? He's lucky if he gets anything from me, so he's not going <laughs> you know what I mean? So... It was a promise, and ever since she made it, she's doing everything she can to drag my name through the mud. It's, oh yeah, we're saying we're swingers. It's humiliating, and it's not just me, she's trying to hurt. It's my entire family. The more I tried, tried to focus on helping with the, with the search, the more it seemed like these people were determined to make me suffer for it. These attacks aren't just random insults from a strange online. They're part of a well-planned effort to, to discredit me and anyone else standing up for Sebastian. To just help me, it's my blank ex mission and it's been my little undercover mission. We are going to, we are up to something. Right. It wasn't just about shutting me up, it was about making sure I couldn't help. There was nothing more accidental about it. This was organised, deliberate and fueled by hate. The P-Fucks may not have been the ones shouting these things from the rooftop, but they stood by while the damage was done, allowing themselves to people who had no problem making up lies to ruin a man's life. Now, I must admit, right? I don't like Chris, and I think everyone who watches my YouTube channels, my on X or on YouTube knows I don't like Chris. Never met the girl, guy, I don't want to meet the guy. Right? I don't. Katie, 
I'm not sure about her. I, don't, I can't say I don't like her because I've never met her. So I can't say I don't like her. But it just things about her that rattle me. Little things she says or does or whatever that rattles me. Anyway. But it was all right by all these people that I've mentioned, that names have been mentioned so far. I'll, that'll probably come after me eventually. Right? It's all right when the P Foots and B Socks took BHB to court. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And this is just the impression I'm getting from watching certain, like I've watched a YouTube channel of theirs last night. Because I didn't do a live, I was catching up on getting some research. And from what I could see, it was like, oh, it was okay to take BHB to court for the p folks and the b socks to take BHB to court. For, but now, because certain people, they align themselves with, I'm not saying they, pally pally, right? But they align themselves with them, right? Because they align themselves with them. It's no, 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 that isn't fair. They haven't done nothing wrong. But, so I think it's a bit hypocritical on both sides, right? Hold on, just got to get something. I just think it's a bit hypocritical on both sides. Right, you got BHB being took to court, yeah, by the P Fox and the B Sox. And oh, And it's okay, that's okay. I don't think it's okay for anyone to be took to court. I really don't. I don't like it. Because it makes you stop and think, could you be the next? Could I be the next? You know what I mean? Say some, someone don't like, I'll take them to court. That's it. So it makes you very weary. And there was some case, some stuff I was covering in the UK. And I backed off. Oh, I backed off. Because we was on, on the other way of going to prison. Be sent to prison for up to two or three years and even more. Just for making a comment or putting a post up. So, when you start sending people to prison, uh, to taking people to court, it makes people rethink. And it makes them rethink every word they say. Right? So, it's okay to take better to court. It's not okay to take anyone they know, right? But then it's they stay in this lawsuit that they don't want to. They cannot make any GoFundMe's, raise any money through the um, super chats, the PayPal's, cash apps, or anything like that to help with their attorneys. But what is Bull on Betty doing? She had got a fundraiser going last week to help with her attorney. So, you know what I mean? So, it's a bit on both sides. But I don't think Betty should have gone to court. She should never have gone, been took to court. The only mistake I think she made was when she got out that car and went up to his car. That was the mistake I feel, in my opinion, she made. Right? She should have just, oh, look, he's just gone past me. You know what I mean? And left it at that. Because he had it on the video that he drove up behind her. In fact, he went past her car twice. Once while talking to the police and once after the police went. So it was on video. 
she didn't need to really follow him and get out of the car and uh, go up to him. That's the only thing I can find she made a mistake by doing. Right? But everything else she said was took out of context, like needing a machete. Yeah, she, you'd need a machete to cut through the bush if you're out there in the bush search, searching. Because you can't just walk through this bush. You've got to cut it down. You've got to look in it. You need to cut that bush down and look in it. Right? As for a gun, I don't know. I can't remember what she said about the GUN. I don't know. I know she did make a remark about a GUN, but I don't know. Right? So, on both sides, no, no one should be being took to court. I should not be sitting here reading this, but I am. Because it is part of the Sebastian Rogers case. Because what they're doing, not just to BHB, but to other YouTubers and Seth and Tony and Dog and Nick the Hat and whoever else, is not right. What they're saying, they might not be the ones in the cars going up to houses. It could be someone who supports their channel who's going up to their houses. You know what I mean? You don't know who you live by. So when people are putting these accusations or whatever, allegedly putting these accusations and whatever out on their YouTube channel, you don't know who's watching your YouTube. You could have some psycho watch it. Oh, that's it. I'm going after them. Boom. You know what I mean? You don't know who's watching your YouTube channel, so you have to be very careful what you say on there. Yes, I can also understand when people say, because uh, it's their page, they can say what they like. But it might be their page, but they have a right as well to make sure that what they say is not going to cause harm to anyone else. It's not threatening, it's not causing harm to anyone else. They have that right to make sure they do that. So, if, like, even I've known Bolo and Betty say stupid things on their lives. And I think, oh, God. And I was just, when I hear Bolo and Betty and I go on her channel and it, she's just going on, off on a rant, I switch off. I switch off. Like, most people should. If you don't like what you hear, switch off. Go to another channel. Right? So, let's carry on. Uh, blah, blah, it's uh, not just me saying, it's my entire thing. All right, we got down to the bottom now. The more I've tried to focus on helping the search, the more it seemed like these people were determined to make me suffer for it. These attacks aren't just random insults from a strange online, but part of a well-planned effort to, do effort to discredit me and anyone else standing up for Sebastian. True to self say, admit, it's my ex blank mission. And it's my little, being my little uncle cover mission. We are up to something. I, I don't know what video or TikTok that was on. I wouldn't be able to get that back because unless you save it, you can't get it. It wasn't just about shutting me up. It's about making sure I couldn't help. This was organised, deliberate and fueled by hate. So right, we've seen that be. Right. It's hard to explain what it feels like to be on the receiving end of all this. I never wanted to be in the spotlight. Oh, don't turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. You never wanted to be in the spotlight, but you came in to help Seth be the spokesperson, which meant you was going to be doing the interviews on TV and on YouTube. So you're putting yourself in the spotlight by saying, okay, I'll be your spokesperson. I'll take that pressure off you, Seth, by do with all these YouTube channels and all these new channels. I'll take that pressure off you. I'll do all that. You're, you put yourself in the spotlight by doing that, Tony. 
Alright. I'm just a regular guy from Oklahoma who thought he could help a father find his missing son. But these people turned me into a target. They dragged my name through the gate and tried to ruin my marriage with vicious lies. That isn't right. You shouldn't go after anyone's personally or their marriage or their family. You should again. The emotional toll has been heavy. It's not just me who's felt it. My wife has been harassed and our peace of mind has been shattered. These false accusations and nasty rumours have left us feeling exposed and afraid. It's been months of waking up every day to some new attack, some new effort to tear us down. The creators who've been leading these attacks are more than just a nuisance. They are accomplices in keeping the focus off of finding Sebastian. Well, yeah, because we're now looking at this lawsuit, right? When we could be focusing on everything, right? But here, neither or there, right? I've done my, my one live the other night on Sebastian, and it's about the time. I hope everyone has seen being and watched that YouTube, that live. It is on my X account and it is on my YouTube account. And I think I've just put it on my Facebook account today. Yes, I have. So it's on my Facebook account. I'll put links to all those. If you're not on my Facebook, go and join me. If you're not on my X, go and join me. I have a lot of people here watching on X. So thank you for being here and watching me. All right. I heard in the search for Mr. Boy and when people who claim to care about the boy work with these creators, it makes me wonder if they're really interested in finding him at all. But I think some of these people that I've mentioned, especially one. Right? He's new to YouTube. I'm new to YouTube. And he was just trying to build his channel up. So he was aligning himself with whoever he wanted to. He's been working, doing some work with mob, the mob crew. You know what I mean? And he's all for, he's not taking sides, but he's all for helping find you Sebastian, the mob crew. It's help, you know what I mean? So I just think he aligned himself with the wrong people. And that got him the clicks and views that he, he wanted to build up his channel. I won't do that. If it takes me 10 years, and I only get 2,000 subs uh, subscribers, then I only get 2,000. Because I'm not here for the clicks and views, I'm here for the children. And if something is hindering a case where people can't go out and look and search for that child, then I will look into it. And this is why we're doing this today. Now, in the search for is when people who claim to care about it, blah, 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 blah. We've read that bit. We've read that bit. My mouse, where's my mouse there? I didn't ask for any of this. I'm just a man who tried to help. I thought I was doing the right thing, and now my life has been turned inside out. These people are going out of the way to make sure I pay a price for getting involved and it's time for someone to put a stop to it. Your Honour, I'm asking for justice, not just for me but for all of us who've been dragged through the mud by people who should know better. It's time to hold these creators accountable for the damage they've done and lies they've spread. They didn't just hurt me, they've hurt, hurt the search for Sebastian and it's time to face the consequences for it. Right, that's just his swearing to whatever, right? I understand that false statements here are made subject to the penalties of perjury. Well, if this goes to court, right, and he's called upon the witness upon the stand, he'll have to show this evidence. He'll have to show it all. He can't just say, oh, well, this happened, that happened. He has to show it. He has to back it up. Same as Seth. They have to have the evidence, the proof, to back it up. Okay?
Exhibit 12. Oh. This way, I'm just talking about the FBI, wanting the FBI to come in. Maybe 13. Again, it's just a news report. Exhibit 14. You know what I mean? A lot of it is just what's already been put out there, like on the news channels, on the news reports, everything. But it's all exhibits. It's all exhibits. Everything. Text messages. Everything. What they need, right, <laughs> is I've got this little handout microphone. Um, recorder. Now, if I was in that position where I was getting calls, threatening calls or whatever, I'd literally turn this on and record the call. And I'd say, you are being recorded. This call is being recorded. You know what I mean? I'd let them know that the call is being recorded. I don't know what the laws are in the UK for recording someone without their permission. I'm going to have to look that up. Because I know in the USA, certain states, is it's a one-person consent. Or some states, you have to have both people's consent. You have to have the person you're recording and everything. Right? Their consent. But I'd have to look it up for the UK. Oh, that's about filing the order against BHB. Oh, God. See what I mean? There's loads of pages. We're only on page 89 and there's 323 pages, but there's loads. Just where uh, I've legal paperwork being sent out, you know what I mean? Right, I've blacked that out because it was on their addresses and phone numbers. Oh, come on, one will, one will. Get past one world. Right, this is what they released. Um, I think it was on X the other night, the other day. Hang on. Right. I'm not sure. Alright. Come on. It's all about dog joining and all this law. But as I said, the full documents, all this is on my Discord account, so please go over. You click on the link, it'll open up and it'll give you two PDF links which will then download onto your laptop or computer. I would advise you to do it on a laptop or computer because of the size of each of the documents. Okay? Come on. So a lot of it is just news reports and things like that. But we have got some more. Don't worry, we've got some more to talk. Right, what's this one? Right. This is the cease and desist demand. 
which is definitely true. It says, Please be advised that I represent Act Night Media LLC, the agency, a Pennsylvania Limited Liability Corporation in connection with the search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Age 15, under the agency's agreement, pardon me, I also represent Dwayne Dog Chapman, Nick Weather, Nick Leha, Hong Weather, Seth Rogers, Mr. Rogers, Tony Al Mathis, National Spokesman for Mr. Rogers, and all interests related to the ongoing search for Mr. Rogers' son, Sebastian. On um, February 25th, 2024, Sebastian disappeared after being last seen at the Texas Roadhouse locator. Well, this is what I was thinking last night as well. I thought a lot of people have said he went missing on the 25th because after 6.30, after he left the Texas Roadhouse, there's no sighting of him. There's no other sighting of him. So, did he actually come home? People are saying, some people believe he didn't come home, didn't get home. I believe he got home. I really do. Right. Uh, at the time, his disappearance was seen, blah, blah, blah. It just tells you about his disappearance, says pictures. And the police respond, now, this is a good thing to note. Police responded to the prayer foot about 18 minutes later by 7.45. Was that not what I said the other night in my life about that time difference? The how the dispatch call said the call came through at six thirty three and I said the police would have been there about seven forty five. So as I said, go back and watch my live on the just the time time difference. Right, go back. I'm not going into it all again. Right. Um, the investigation escalated with naval canvases and foot searches commencing on Kelling Lake at 9.33 a.m., including multiple visits to Sebastian's home, despite thorough efforts, including checks of all nearby wind cameras, not a single neighbor reported seeing Sebastian. The search for Sebastian is a, a critical and sensitive matter, and your reckless interference is not just irresponsible, it's illegal. Your actions are not protected by the First Amend Amendment. You've crossed the line, repeatedly and knowingly. Now, don't forget, this is the cease and desist. Your interference has gone beyond more. Me commentary is now active obstruction, and we will not tolerate it. At night, with no offices in New York and headquarters in Pennsylvania, operates under the jurisdiction of both New York and Pennsylvania, where we will seek remedies. Jurisdiction in Tennessee is established as it is the residence of Mr. Rogers and the location where the search efforts were being obstructed. Ah. So that's why they, so they could go after everyone. Even those in Tennessee who've been obstructing my allegedly. So I've got a bit of a sore throat coming. Right. Florida laws apply to Mr. Chapman's residence in Florida where he we will likewise seek remedies. Right. Your conduct has infiltrated the operational and strategic aspects of the search for Sebastian, resulting in the following. Right. Re one, relocation of resources. Your interfer interference has forced the agency to divert resources from searching for Sebastian to addressing your disruptive and malicious actions. This is not just unethical, it's constitutive it's torturous interference 
on the 42PACS8351. Interference with Contractual Relations in Pennsylvania, Tennessee Code and, and 47 50109, Procurement of Breach of Contracts in Tennessee, and New York Penal Law 19505, Obstructing Governmental Administration in the Second Degree. In New York federally, you are obstructing operations under 18 U.S.C. 1505, obstructions of proceedings before departments, agencies and committees. We can and will hold you accountable for these clear violations, including 18 PICS 5101, obstructing administration of law or other governmental functions, and 18 U.S.C. 371, Conspiracy to defraud the United. Oh wow, wow! To defraud the United States. Two postponement of travel. The threats and harassments that your actions have incited have directly hindered the search by forcing the postponement of critical travel. But for Dwayne Dog Chapman, who resides in Florida. This threats violate 18 PAACS 270 terroristic threats. Whoa! In Pennsylvania, Tennessee Code and 3917308 harassment. In Tennessee, New York, Penal Law 2430 aggravated harassment in the second degree. In New York and Flat Stat 784 stalking definitions penalties. In Florida, I also breached federal law under, oh my lord, under 18 U.S.C. 875C Interstate Communications. If these threats were aimed at intimidating or scaring our participants, you are also liable under 18 PACS 4952 Intimidation of Witnesses or Victims. Whoa. And USC 1951 interface with commerce by threats or violence. Wow. They are not messing about, are they? Encouragement of false allegations. Your attempts to incite the public into flooding the Pennsylvania Board of Parole with false reports violate. 18 PACS 4906 false reports to law enforcement authorities in Pennsylvania. Tennessee Code 3916502 false reports in Tennessee. And New York Penal Law 24050 falsely reporting an incident in New York. Federally, your conduct breaches 18 USC 1001 false statements. And your actions also potentially violate, violate 18 U.S.C. 1513, retaliating against a witness, victim, or an informant. This isn't free speech. Oh, God. It's blatant and unlawful interference. Oh, my Lord. If I got that, I'd be going, I'd have to get the, the, <laughs> the, a book giving me all the penal codes, what it all means, and break it all down. And how many years, and what does that mean? You know what I mean? How many years? Because, oh my lord. You rec flooding of false leads. Your reckless dissemination of false information has inundated state and federal agencies with bogus leads, effectively obstructing the investigation. This conduct blatantly violates ITP, false books, blah, 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 blah. Voice parks in Tennessee and New York people look. <clears throat> if fabricated evidence against was involved, 18 PACS 4910 tampering with or fabricating physical evidence. Oh, God. You're undermining reward credibility. Your baseless claims that the reward is fraudulent have directly undermined the search effort. I heard. I heard a rumor that was going about that it wasn't for real. You know what I mean? It's not real, and you're not going to get this ten, fifty thousand. You know what I mean? But 
You will. How it works. Right. And this is how Nick the hat broke it down. I, you know what? Some people may not like him, but this is how he broke it down. You give the FBI some information which finds Sebastian or leads to people who know about Sebastian. Right? Or whatever. You get the 50000 off the FBI. If at the same time you tell Dog the bounty hunter this information as well, and it comes out to be true, you'll get the 50000 off them. So you got to get the 100000 because you get it off the FBI and you get it off them. Your baseless claims that the warrant is fraudulent have directly undermined the search effort leading to the withdrawal of essential resources. Whoa! This constitutes defamation under 4.2 PACS. Liable and slander in Tennessee and New York civil practice laws and rules liable and slander. Federally, your actions likely breach 18 USC 1343 fraud by wire, radio, or television, and 18 USC 1341 frauds and swindles. This is why it's called a, like, it's a RICO. This is why. This is why as well, it's a RICO. Your actions are directly on unlawful interference with the agency's effort to locate Sebastian. Because if you go around putting out information saying this world isn't real, it's fake, then people who could come in, search organisations who could come in to help, are going to say, well, if, if that's not real, why would we waste our time? We're doing it for, like, a lot of them will do it for the money. Right? So if they find out, oh, well, this isn't real, they're not going to come, are they? Because I noticed a big interest in search parties again coming forward to look for Sebastian when that first 50,000 went out. And then when it went up to 100,000, even more search parties were wanting to come forward. Right? Uh, your actions are directing on law for interference with the agency's efforts. Uh, blah blah blah. Interference with search operations. The same again, all the penal codes or whatever you call them. Right, distraction from Sebastian search. Your unauthorized back, back, what? Your unauthorized background checks and reports on individuals involved in the search have driven away volunteers and hindered. Yes, they have. They have. Right, we may not have liked what United Navy, Navy or whatever was doing. But they came to help. And they wasn't given a chance. But they were threatening others as well. They did threaten another YouTuber and he was just sitting in his car. He didn't even, even have his camera out. They come up and threatened him. So, a bit on both sides again. Right. So it, it it did drive a lot of volunteers away, and it did hinder the investigation. But I wouldn't just say it was just them saying that. There's other YouTubers that I know spoke about being like I spoke about them, but I didn't go out putting threats out about them. 
I spoke about them. Other YouTubers spoke about them, but they didn't go out and put threats out. So I suppose that's what they're aiming at. Then let's say that. Slang during harassment. You continued slang during harassment of the agency and the individuals involved in the search constitute violations, blah, blah, blah. If your actions are found to be part of a coordinated attack on these individual civil rights. Oh, additionally, you could be charged under 18 USC 241 conspiracy against rights if your actions are found to be part of a coordinated attack on these individual civil rights. False claims regarding evidence. You have publicly claimed that Sebastian Panks were found. There weren't. A pair of black trousers were found, but there was too small to be Sebastian's. Even the YouTuber who found them and got the police to come and get them, as soon as she picked them up, she could see before she picked them up, sorry, they were going to be too small for Sebastian, but it was possible something she found, so she had to report it and they had to come and collect it. And I was discredited like a day or so later. They weren't Sebastian's. They were too small. You have publicly claimed that Sebastian, Sebastian Panks were found a statement that has no factual basis and is purely intended to mislead and disrupt the investigation. Yep. You are hereby demanded to provide all tests, reports and other materials that support this claim immediately. Oh my lord. Oh my god, they haven't got that. Like, it's just what they said. You know what I mean? Oh my lord. Finally, to do so will be construed, construed as intentional fabrication of evidence, further solidifying your liability under 18 USC and 101 false statements. Wow. We will not tolerate it. Just meant. Dissemination of false information and je that jeopardizes the investigation. Wow, wow. My cat is about to get a kick at the back side. You are hereby in demanded to immediately cease and desist from all activities that interfere with the search for Sebastian, defame those involved, obstruct injustice in any matter. Failure to comply with this demand within 48 hours of receiving this notice will result in an emergency injunction in federal court to bar you from any further interference until you appear before a federal judge. <sighs> Shush. We will also file identical emergency actions in Pennsylvania, New York and Tennessee state courts where Mr. Rogers resides and the agency is registered. Oh my lord. You know what I mean? It's there's one, two, three states. They'll be filing these in. Right. Next go up. This is not a game, you've run out of chances, simply put. If you want to keep talking, you can take the stand in court, otherwise refrain from this criminal behaviour. Review the attached, the attached federal injunction immediately. If any of this is unclear, consult an attorney without delay. You have 48 hours to comply. Govern yourself accordingly. So there's only giving them 48 hours to go through all that document and to get and to go and get a solicitor and your attorney. Wow. But that was the cease and desist. So they was told they was given notice of that federal injunction. All right. I've left a name in because her name is out there on YouTube. But I've deleted her address and anything else.
emergency petition for parliament preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order. This petition seeks immediate judicial intervention to prevent ongoing and unlawful, unlawful interference with the search for Sebastian Ryan Drake, Rogers, age 15, and to hold defendants continue def defamatory and obstructive actions that threaten the integrity and efficient, efficiency of this urgent search effort. Introduction, oh God. Well, plaintiffs are engaged in the urgency, urgent and sensitive task, task of locating Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, a 15 year old missing child last seen on February 25th, 2024, in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Despite extensive efforts, Sebastian remains missing, necessitating a coordinated and un un uninterrupted search. Right. Defending has engaged in reckless and unlawful action. And this is all allegedly, remember. All allegedly. Right. So, oh, I've got a comment. Sorry, I didn't see the comment if you're still in it. Hi, Karen. Sorry, I didn't see your comment. Because when I'm reading, I'm on another screen. I really need to get a second screen. That'll be something after Christmas I think I'll be doing. Right, I really need a second screen. Right, so. Let's continue. Oh, God. We've got 323 pages, but as I said, a lot of it is like, you can download it yourself and go through it fully if you want. Defending has engaged in reckless and unlawful actions, including the dissemination, false information, harassment, threats, and interference that has severely disrupted the search operations. Defending's actions have caused significant harm to very crucial resources and PD plaintiffs' lawful efforts to locate Sebastian. The court has jurisdiction over this action pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1331 as the claims arise under federal law, including but not limited to 18 U.S.C. 101-1505-1513 and 1951. Venue is proper in this district pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 139B as a substantial part of the events giving rise to the claims occurred in this district. And the plaintiffs, including At Night Media, are based in Pennsylvania. Right, now, as you can see, I've blacked out the names and the well, not the names, but the addresses, because I'm not doxing anyone. Right, I'm not doxing anyone. Not if they're on YouTube, I'm not doing it. I haven't blacked out the app. No, me, Jan, because you can find that online. You can go online and find that. Parties Plaintiff at Night Media LLC is a Pennsylvania limited liability corporation with its principal place of business at one World Trade Center, floor eight. Oh my God, floor 85. Are you stupid? New York, New York, and he's in the process of... I'm not surprised in the process of relocating. Oh. Plaintiff Seth Rogers is an individual residing at... Mr Rogers is the father of Sebastian Rogers. Plaintiff Tony Al Mathis is an individual in his official capacity as national spokesperson for Mr Rogers residing at... Plaintiff Hong, I can't say your last name, so I apologise, I'm not going to say it because I'll just balls it all up. He's an individual in his official capacity as an officer of Act Night Media, our LC, residing at. 
Plain Teeth Nicola Hat is an individual residing at, right? You just got all the Plain Teeth Dog, Drain Dog is an individual in his own professional capacity as banter on and public figure. Defendant Stephanie Jo Trude is an individual residing. Now, these are non party responding YouTube, right? So, I'm not, I haven't blacked out any of their information. Um, because one is non party responding TikTok Incorporated is a corporation with its principal place, of, it's just a place of business, right? I'm not TikTok on YouTube. This court has subject matter. Jurisdiction over this and a personal jurisdiction over defendants pursuant to 5 U.S.C. 552A, 4B, 4B and 2, 28 U.S.C. 1331. Venue lies in this district under 5 U.S.C. 552A, 4B. Factual background. Right, on February 25th, 2024, Sebastian Wayne Rogers disappeared after being last seen at the Texas Roadhouse in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That was the last official sighting of Sebastian Rogers. Last official sighting. He was, he was reported missing early the next morning and his disappearance has triggered a multi-state search effort involving plaintiffs and law enforcement. Defendant has engaged in reckless and unlawful actions, including the dissemination of false information, harassment, threats, interference that have severely disrupted the search operations. Defendant's actions have caused significant harm, divert critical resources, impeded plaintiff's lawful efforts to locate Sebastian. Take a breath. And a drink. My throat is hurting. Thank you in this for the long call, you lot, because we're going to be here a while. Alright, get comfy, get yourself a drink. This is a bumpy road, so buckle up. Right, defending, uh, blah, blah, defending actions, blah, blah, we've done that, right? On or about September the 14th, 2024, defendant was served with a demand to cease and desist, which we've just read, which included a notice stating, failure to comply with this demand within 48 hours of receiving this notice will result in an emergency injunction in federal court to bar you from any further interference until you appear before a federal judge. The time has elapsed. And the defendant has shown neither respect or any intent to comply with the com demand. A true and correct copy of the cease and desist, desist demand is attached to T2 and incorporated hearing as exhibit 1, which we just see. 22. Defendant's actions include, but are not limited to, a. Dissemination of false information. Defendant has spread false claims about the discovery of evidence. If she did, and she has not got the information to back that up, you know what I mean? I should imagine they've got the um, video or something of her saying that. They'd have to have some sort of video or clip of a TikTok or whatever it was, TikTok or YouTube, to say that. Oh, God. Defending has spread false claims about the discovery of evidence, including unfounded assertions that Sebastian's plans were found without any factual basis. These actions have not only misled the public, but also caused mass, mass hysteria, hysteria and obstructed the search of us. Yeah. Because I, I was seeing YouTubers with clickbait headings such as Sebastian Rogers pants found that's clickbait 
what you should, they could have put Sebastian Rogers stop, right? Then gone. Black pair of pants found. Are they Sebastian's? Right? Then when you go and talk about it, you can say, well, my total says, are they Sebastian's? Well, no, they're not Sebastian's. Right? But a black pair of pants were found and handed into law enforcement. Without any factual basis, these actions have not only misled the public but also caused mass hysteria and obstructed the search efforts that constitute violations under 18 U.S.C. 101 false statement, <coughs> which penalises making false or fraudulent statements within the jurisdiction of the federal government. I wonder if I can get my voice over to read this. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Okay, can we No. Normally I've got like a little thing up here, up on the top of my page, but it's not showing anything. That's a shame. I could get the computer to read it out, but it's not letting me. Let's have a look. Um, right, let's continue. I may not be on to me because I may not be able to talk. Oh. <laughs> uh, also potentially violate false information and hoaxes which prohibits conveying false information related to public safety in 18 USC 1512 tampering with evidence, I should imagine that is. Tampering with a witness, victim or informant, as the false claims could influence or mislead, mislead those involved in the investigation. Additionally, these actions violate, violate state law included 18 PICS 4906, false reports to law enforcement authorities in Pennsylvania and Tennessee. I wonder if I could get a book with all the um, codes in, the law code, what they've got here, with a breakdown. But you'd have to have a, one for every state, wouldn't you, because every state has different laws. Yeah, I don't think I've got the space for that. Right, I'm going to let you just read this. This is incitement of harassment of threats. Just read that a sec, I'll be right back. Oh, I come back. Just get me a drink. Oh God, this is serious here. You know what I mean? This is very because it goes on to talk about through electronic communications. That is serious. This is and. Convenient actions constitute violations of federal and state laws, severely obstructing law enforcement efforts and undermining the integrity of investigation. The defendant has engaged in spreading false claims about the discovery of evidence, including unfounded assertions that Sebast Sebastian's pants were found without any factual basis. 
these actions have misled the public cause mass hysteria and arguments. The defendant has incited the public to flood in Pennsylvania border parole and other agencies with false reports. Oh my lord. Undermining reward credibility. It just goes on and on. Right. Now, request for relief. Wherefore, plaintiff respectfully requests this court. One, prohibit the defendant from engaging in any actions that interfere with or obstruct the search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers including the dissemination of false information, incitement of harassment pursuant to 18 U.S.C. from 1512 and 18 U.S.C. Wow. All to that, the defendant, no. Oh. I think she's the one on TikTok, she must be. All to that, the defendant's social media handles, including, but not limited to TikTok accounts, hashtag, at, sorry, at BBQ Lady, Barbecue Lady Official Backup, at Barbecue Lady, at, what, all them handles. Oh, she's on YouTube as well. YouTube account, Barbecue Lady from TikTok. Any accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Hmm. You may have a problem with X. Because he believes in free speech. I like X for that reason. But you see, even our government, the UK government, you put something on there that they don't like. Be it against uh, an, a minority group, a certain minority group, or a certain religion, or something about the government, or whatever. If you put something on there they don't like, they'll have you. You know what I mean? So we have to be very careful now what we say in the UK. We really do. The temporary bank pending a full hearing before this court, pursuant to... Oh, right. So they're not saying she's, they've got to be shut down, just be banned, temporary banned. Meaning, she could just open up a new account. By doing that, it's just, she'll just open up new accounts. You know what I mean? With different date of birth, different, maybe a different address, a different email address and all that. She'll just open up new accounts. So you're best leaving her with these accounts because you know these accounts and you can track these accounts. You know what I mean? And you can watch what she's saying or doing. Yeah? So, personally, I will not have any of these banned, temporary or not. Keep them there. That way people, you, the gov that or little lawyers, whoever, can keep an eye on her accounts. But you shut them down, she'll open up new accounts in different names. And it says, bar the defendant from circumventing this order by appearing or operating on other channels, platforms, or accounts, not specifically listed below, including any newly created alternative account, and that any such actions will be considered a violation of this order. But you've got to find them accounts. You'd have to find those accounts. You'd have to say, oh, such and such is opening up a new account on YouTube. Oh, she's got a new account. You know what I mean? You'd have to rely on people telling them she's opened up a new account. Personally, I say leave the accounts as they are. That way you can keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on what is being said, what is being done. Right? So, 
All of the defendant to surrender all electronic devices, communications, notes, reports, emails, and any other material related to the disappearance and or search for Sebastian. Looking at my phone, my phone's crap. Then I have my laptop. You know, I feel like throwing it out the window some days. Related to the disappearance or search for Sebastian Wayne Drake while just pursuant to Federal RCP26 and Fed RCP34. All the defendant to produce all tests, reports, or any other material supporting a public claim regarding the alleged finding of Sebastian Pants or any other evidence. Mm. All that the defendant to appear before the court to explain her actions and show cause why she should not be held in contempt for obstructing the search efforts for Sebastian, pursuant to 18 U.S.C. 401. All that like, should the defendant fail to comply with these court orders to attempt to appear in any other form to evade these procedures, she shall be held in contempt of court. So that's saying... She cannot go on anyone else's channels, right? Which she was yesterday. She was on someone else's channel yesterday, but the it hasn't been ordered yet. The order hasn't been put in for that, right? So it just means she can't go on any other TikTok channels, any other YouTube channels, um, Facebook. Under a different name, X under a different name, grant such other relief as the court deems just and proper to protect the integrity of the search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. These lawyers know what they're talking about. As I said, they've got a big name in there already because he used to be the um, attorney for Trump, Donald Trump. Exhibit 27, Calm Injustice. Uh, that was just their reply back to their cease and desist thing. Alright, this is all a uh, reply to me. Alright. Finally, please consider this letter as a formal response to denying all claims based in your cease and desist letter. I am entirely baseless and without legal foundation. Mistruth has not engaged in any unlawful behaviour, nor has she violated any of the rights of your clients as they have been violated in a cease and desist letter. Should you or your clients continue to pursue these unfounded claims, we are fully prepared to take appropriate legal action to, to who defend the world is definitely due to and hold your clients accountable for any harm caused by these merit accusations. Review any further pursuit of this matter as a misuse of the legal process. Whoa! Fighting talk! That's from the Coleman Justice Centre. Judy C. Coleman, attorney and counsellor. Oh, come stop. God, it has a mind of its own sometimes, it does. Uh, 
Right, this is just back dog again, and he's whatever. And by Betty, put on Betty. I've seen that. Oh. Have you gone up? Did you jump that far up? No, oh. oh, digging it carbs like okay. past all this again. Oh God! Stop! Oh, listen to this, Ricky Smith. Oh, I'm done. Um, I'll just go past it because it's got a address. Miss Smith. This film represents at night media. Now, this is, I believe, Cluminati. I think. I can't. Don't quote me on that. I think it is. This film represents at night media LLC, the agency. Dwayne Dog Chapman, Nick the Hat, Hong, Z, whatever, Seth Rogers, Tony Ramos, and other associate parties in the ongoing search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Sebastian. Based on information and belief, you are related. You are related. You are related to Chris and Katie Proud people. Did anyone know that? Did anyone know that Miss Smith, who I believe is crewing at her, was related to Chris and Katie Proudful? Somewhere along the family line, she's related to them. Well, I didn't know that. With Katie being Sebastian's mother and Christopher, his stepfather, it's our understanding. Right, so we'll go back again, yep. because I've got to read it. All right. Based on information and belief, you are related to Christopher and Katie Peafoot. Okay? Related. Oh. Your action, but well, it is our understanding that you're taking it upon yourself to spearhead a malicious and baseless smear campaign on social media aimed at furthering your family's unfounded conspiracy theories regarding Sebastian's disappearance. Right, well, well, hold on. Hold on, I'm just going to take this up because I just want to check something. I just need to check something. All right. Just need to check something before we go. Right, just need to go up just a little bit. Right. I'm gonna 
Because this is a is immediate cease and desist. Right. I think it is to cleaning at a Ricky Smith. I think it is. I'm not sure. So please don't quote me on that. I'm going by the dress they have got here. So I know she lives near them. She lives in the area, so. Uh, I just want to make sure there's nothing. Yeah, I'm going to just black that one. So I've got everything there. Yeah. It's just that one section I missed. Right, out of 23 pages, missing one little bit is not bad. Not bad. And don't forget, I was doing it very quickly this morning. I literally got up. And I was sitting there and I thought, oh, I'll see if I can get them formed. So, but because of my medication, I, I do not, I do not start to, I cannot get motivated, put it that way. It's like, do not talk to me, do not come near me, just leave me alone in the corner with my coffee. And that's it, just leave me alone. And it takes me like two hours to wake up get motivated and have about five cups of coffees in those two hours right so i then got my laptop and i was sitting watching a youtube channel and i was downloading this and i thought right and i sat there and i was going through it all and then i thought oh god i've got to be off here by three o'clock because i've got to go live so i didn't do too bad anyway this is has it come up yet This is to Ricky Smith, Miss Smith, right? And as I said, I'm not sure, but I believe that is clearing at I'm not sure, so don't go, go, oh, right? This firm represents uh, blah, blah. Based on information belief, you are related to Christopher and Katie Prayful. I did not know that. Right, now, it seems strange. If at first, if this is who I believe it is, she was all for uh, Seth. She was all for Seth. Right? Then she has a talk with Chris and Katie, like a four-hour talk, and, oh, no, don't like Seth no more. I'm not having it. And that's when her allegiance changed to Chris and Katie. But wouldn't you have thought if she was related to them, she would have been on their side from the beginning? So I'm wondering if she even knew she was related to them. Because she might be a distant, distant relative, you know what I mean? Could be a distant sort of relative. Ten times down the road sort of thing. So perhaps she didn't know she was related to them. And that's why that four hour conversation she found out she was related to them. 
And that's when she's changed her views. Right? So, with Katie being Sebastian Mother and Christopher being his CFRB, I understand that you're taking it upon yourself to spread the mere spirit. Families unfounded conspiracy theories regarding Sebastian's disappearance. <coughs> because I remember she did. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. I remember at the beginning when she first started looking into this. She, she did a drive through of the area, past the house in the daytime. She did a drive through of the past the house on the night time. <coughs> she was all over this case and how Sebastian disappeared and going past their house and everything. So I think possibly in that four hour conversation she had on the phone with him, he's probably said, Do you know where we're related? You know what I mean? Your mum is my grandmother's aunt, whatever. You know what I mean, sort of thing. I think that's why she's changed her allegiance to Chris and, for Chris and Katie. Right, let's go past that first one. Your actions have crossed far beyond beyond the realm of unlawful expression. You have made defamatory statements, including false accu falsely accusing our clients of being a R and issuing threats that go beyond mere insults. That this behaviour is not just reckless, it is illegal. It is. You can't just go round calling someone a, 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 an R, R-A-P-I-S-T. You can't. Without founded substantial proof and evidence. You know what I mean? You can't go around saying things like that. You have also made racially charged remarks against Mr. Hong, whatever, compounding your liability and demonstrating a willful disregard for the truth and the law. You have encouraged the public to flood to clients with false information, directly obstructing efforts to locate Sebastian. Your behaviour has wasted valuable time and resources that should be focused on finding a missing child, not defending against your baseless attacks. The scope and impact... <coughs> now, this is a cease and desist, by the way. The scope and impact of your actions are not only unethical, but unclear, but are clear violations of federal and state laws. Federal violations or conduct violates multiple feg federal statutes, include... Oh, God. I'm not going through all this again. Why? Prohibits... Transmitting threats across state lines with an intent to injure a statute directly implicated by your threatening communications. Criminalizes obstructing or affecting a commerce through threats or coercion, which includes your threats against Mr. Chapman and the other clients. I'm sure, to be honest with you, I'm sure Doug is really, really scared of these threats. You know what I mean? I'm sure he is. Not. You know what I mean? But they are threats that can be made to him. So, yeah, he can handle himself. Because he's got a team of people who literally do it for him. You know what I mean? And Everclines addresses uh, stalking, addresses the use of electronic communications to harass, intimidate or subvert so, surveil individuals with the intent to cause substantial, substantial emotional distress. Retaliating against a witness, victim, or an informant penalizes, penalizes acts of retaliation against those informed, involved in federal proceedings, which your targeted attacks are clearly aimed to achieve. 
prohibits false statements, you know, prohibits making knowing, making knowingly false or fraudulent statements to federal authorities, a crime you've committed by encouraging, by encouraging false reports that waste law enforcement's resources. Yep. State violations. Pennsylvania. False reports to law enforcement authorities criminalizes making false reports with the intent to implicate another or cause unwanted investigations by law enforcement directly applicable to your actions in misleading authorities. Now, I must admit, BHB has been saying this for a while. Been saying this for a while now. So do they not realise that every time they say this, to tell, oh, you should do this, you should phone these people up, you are wasting their time and taking resources away from finding Sebastian. You know what I mean? BHB said this months ago. Right, your deliberate actions have not only spread falsehoods and sowed, sowed chaos, but have actively sabotaged the efforts of, de of dedicated individuals working tirelessly to find a missing child. Your actions are not protected speech, they are malicious, defamatory and obstructive, leaving you fully exposed to serious legal consequences. Yeah, this is the sort of thing our government is saying to us. Now, when we do anything, we are put up in front of a judge. They could say they come to arrest me. They like arrest me the next day. Tomorrow, I'll be put up in front of a judge. The same day, I'll be sent to jail. You know what I mean? And this is what they sort of base their own sort of thing. So, you are hereby demanded to immediately decease and desist from all activities that interfere with the search for Sebastian. I thought it was strange that I hadn't heard anything from her for a while. I thought it was strange. This includes, but is not limited to, ceasing and disseminating of false information halting your smear campaign and refraining from making any further defamatory or racially charged statements. Furthermore, you are required to preserve and produce all electronic devices, communications, notes, recordings and financial records related to your involvement in the search for Sebastian, including any materials with that pertain to your defamatory statements, social media posting, other related activities. Failure to comply with this demand will result in immediate legal action, including an emergency injunction in federal court to bar you from further interference and the filing of motions to compel the produ productions of these get the words out of these materials. Failure to comply with this demand within 48 hours of receiving this notice will result in legal proceedings mm. in federal court as well as actions in Pennsylvania, New York and Tennessee. So she could go to all, all those three states and be took to court on the same charges. Is that what they're saying? This is not a negotiation, it's your final warning. If you choose to continue this reckless behaviour, you will face the full, full force of legal action. Should you have any questions regarding this matter, consult legal counsel immediately. Ooh. In the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, at night, Media LLC, Pennsylvania Plaintiff, Ricky Smith, Defendant. The weather's horrible today. Can't we tell we're coming into the autumn. We've hit autumn. The rain's hitting and now the leaves will definitely fall off the trees. Hold on, I'll just tell you if the leaves are falling off all the trees yet. Oh, wow. Wow. 
It was uh, we're only on Sunday. Is it Sunday or Saturday? We're on twentieth. We're only on Sunday. And I looked at these trees outside where I live, and they're still full, full of leaves. They changed to no, no golden colour and red colour. Now the tree's nearly empty. That's because of the, the rain. Right? This is an emergency petition for preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order. Right? Comes now. Plaintiffs at, at Night Media, Grand Dog Chapman, Nicholas Hat. Nicholas Hatong and Seth Rogers attorney. Collectively plaintiffs by and through un under signed counsel respectively moved the Honourable Court for a temporary strain or preliminary injunction against defending. Ricky Smith defending. This petition seeks immediate ju judicial intervention to prevent ongoing and unlawful interference with the search. So obviously she didn't take heed of that cease and desist and do anything within 48 hours because this is the emergency petition. But have they, has this been actually put in, has this been uh, put into court yet? I don't think it has because I think we would have heard about it. Continued defamatory and obstructive actions that threaten the integrity and efficiency of this urgent search effort. Plaintiffs are engaged in the urgent sensitive task of locating Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. All right. Defendant Ricky Smith related to Christopher and Katie Proudfoot. I really did not know that, but I think, I truly believe she didn't realise she was related to him. Because if this is who I think it is, then she was all for Seth. She really was. She's all for Seth and finding this little boy. And then she's, uh, we heard that she had this four-hour phone call or something like that with Chris and Katie, and then all of a sudden, uh, views went to, to Chris and Katie. So I'm wondering, did Chris say, did you know you're related to me? We're related. Somewhere down the road, we're related. Has engaged in reckless, defamatory and obstructive action. These include initiating an online smear campaign, disseminating false information, making racially charged statements against Mr. Hong and inciting harassment and threats against Grand Dog, Chapman and other plaintiffs. Defendant Smith has further disrupted the search for, just, for Sebastian by inciting the public to plug tip clients and law enforcement to be false support. Diverting valuable resources from legitimate searches for... Now, you could get that information off from Bull on Bear because she'd have all that YouTube information. She'd have all that because she mentioned this. She did mention it. The court has jurisdiction over the action pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1331 as the claims arise under federal law, including but not limited to 18 U.S.C. and 1951. Venue is proper in this district as a substantial part of the events giving rise to the crimes occurred, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right, hold on. Let me just go past all this because it hasn't been redacted. I, I thought I'd redacted it out and I hadn't. Right, it's just addresses again. Uh, this court has subject matter jurisdiction over the action and personal jurisdiction. Venue lies in the district under 5 UFC 552A4B. He was reported missing early, blah, blah, blah. Factual background, this is. 
Defending Smith as engaging unlawful actions have severely disrupted the search of rising cause and significant harm, diverting critical resources and defeating plaintiffs' lawful efforts to locate Sebastian. On or about September 17, 2024, the defendant was served with a demand to cease and desist, which included the notice saying, stating, Failure to comply with this demand within 48 hours of receiving this notice will result in legal proceedings in federal court. The time has last, lapsed and the defendant has shown neither respect or any intent to comply with the demand. A true and correct copy of the cease and desist demand is attached to the incorporated hearing as Exhibit I. She spread, they have spread, defending has spread false claims regarding evidence, including unfounded assertions about Long and Sebastian belongings, right? Obstructed search efforts, falsely calling a client at R, and issuing racially charged remarks against Mr. Hong inflaming public sentiment and damaging reputations. Oh, hate crimes. Oh, they're getting on the hate crimes there, which penalises acts of violence or intimidation motivated by bias against race, national origin or other protected characteristics. Ethnic intimidation in Pennsylvania, and hate crimes in New York. So, if they're putting these charges in all three states, in their courts, does, she, does that mean she have to go to three court cases? One in Tennessee, one in New York, and one in Pennsylvania. Does that mean she have to... Does that mean all of these that have been cited have to go, right, so um, there's that one, anyway, so we're not going to go for all that, because it's all the same, uh, all that to Fenton Smith's social media codes, not limited to Twitter account, and any other uh, accounts on platforms, not exp explicitly named, be temporarily banned, pending a full hearing before this call, hmm. but as I said, I know they're covering the back by saying they are not allowed to open up new accounts and all that lot. But they can. And who would know? They wouldn't know that she's opening up a new account. Unless someone tells her. Right? She's not allowed to go by the defendant from circumventing this order by appearing on are all operating on other channels, platforms, or kinds not specifically listed above, including a newly created alternative account, accounts, and that such actions will be considered a violation of this order. All the uh, defendant Smith to appear before the court to claim her actions and so caused why she should not be held in contempt for obstructing the search efforts. Right. Now this is Barbecue Lady, right? I didn't know about this. I heard something about how she was raising funds, but I heard it was about... I heard someone was raising funds for... The billboards, right? This one was raising it to organise, to raise funds for legal expenses. That's no different from what BHB has done. I'm sorry, but it isn't. You know what I mean? But you see, it's... BHB never had an order put against her to stop her from doing that. These are putting the order in to stop them from doing that.
All right, now I'm going to say 34, but it says there for 554 pounds raised. I don't know. It's 28 days ago, a month ago, that was. Created 17th of September. So I don't know if she's reached her target. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Oh. I'm trying to get uh, past these cease and desist letters because I want you to listen to what some of them have said about what's been going on in their lives. Yeah, there were people on YouTube saying that that uh, law firm was, is corrupt. There was. The channel's names are coming out of Granny's Boxing Queen B. Also, there are two other cases associated with your law firm. I would like to remain anonymous, but wanted you to know what is going on. And if you are involved with the Sebastian Rogers case, you can email if I can help in any other way. Now, this is about Nicola Hat. Right? They literally. You can, as I said, download these, go on to my Discord, there's my link up on screen. You'll find it under Sebastian Rogers, right? You can download, there's the link again. You can download these documents, the exhibits and the At Night Media LLC, the truth and whatever, right? These are just exhibits they're showing. Of, of everything, right? You can download this and go through this yourself because this is so long. I I couldn't go through this all this. So I am um, right. This is declaration of Hong, right? Hong, being duly sworn, according to law, he by depose and affirm the following. Hong residing at, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, blah, 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 that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. On or about August the 30th, can I authorise the deployment of, of At Night's Rapid Response Team, RRT, to allocate additional sources at the start of the investigation into the disappearance of Wayne Drake Rogers. As managing partner at night, I, re I recognise that the RRT's deployment was necessary due to signs that emerged early on, signals that were coordinated attempts to interfere with the search. The urgency of the situation grew even more apparent as we saw how certain individuals, especially Stephanie Jano True, Young with BBQ lady and Jessica Lynn Sang, Granny, Granny's watching, were consistently working to derail efforts to find Sebastian. Reports from Seth Rogers, Sebastian's father, added to the growing list of red flags. He shared how Chris people, Sebastian's stepfather, had tried to spray super. I cannot get my words out. Persuade him to get their stories right about the events leading up to Sebastian's disappearance. Well, how can, even if um, Seth was working, so how can he get his stories right 
His story is he hadn't seen Sebastian since two weeks before he went missing. He spoke to Sebastian, I believe, he said, on the Friday. But he didn't speak to, uh, Thursday or Friday. He didn't speak to him all weekend because it was his mum's weekend. He doesn't interfere when he's with his mum. When it's her weekend, he doesn't interfere. So he was at work. So how how would he know what was going on at that house at Stafford Court over the weekend? He wouldn't know. He was at work. And if he said, oh, I knew this and this, they'd say, how, if he was working? So, get your stories straight. Oh, God. About the events leading up to Se Sebastian's disappearance, Swar C. Swan declared, yeah, we've seen that. This behaviour only depended deep in suspicions that the P folks were just uninvolved Weren't just uninvolved, but might actually be concealing critical details that could help bring Sebastian home. On September 2nd, 2024, at around 7am, Knight was officially retained to assist in the search and rescue of Sebastian. To tackle this case effectively, I authorised our team to go beyond typical measures. This involved assembling a specialist group composed of civilians... <coughs> <coughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. <coughs> right. Civilians, licensed private investigators, and operatives situated across the US. We planned for anticipatory aerial support and established search and rescue resp response funds with surveillance authorised in multiple states. These locations included Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Wisconsin, Virginia, Puerto Rico, Alaska, California, particularly focusing on the sex trafficking operations, Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas and Oklahoma. A lot of places. At night, I entered this agreement with two clear ob objectives, find Sebastian, Wayne Drake, Rogers, and bring him home, or ensure that anyone responsible for his disappearance would be prosecuted and convicted. We quickly discovered that the search was being undermined by a coordinated smear campaign. Several content creators seemed to have made it their goal to discredit anyone trying to help find Sebastian. They weren't just random individuals, these were known personalities, including Queen B, SF, Investigators, T-Rev, Dolly Vision, April Chapman, and others who actively spread defamatory narrative online. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dolly Vision. Whoa. Who's April Chapman? I don't know. Their tactics were sophisticated, using tools like bots and phony social media accounts to amplify attacks. They even coordinate with each other to trim figures and take statements out of text as we done against and as was done against Andrew Griffin. Yes, they made a nine minute video. And what they done, they took little clips from all these videos she done. Right and put put them together. And I thought you've got to watch each video individually, the whole you you know what I mean? It's like what was it? Um Someone said, and I agreed with them the other week. Uh, oh, God, I can't think now. What was it now? Oh, my mind's gone dead. But you've got to look at the whole picture, which means watching the whole video. So if you've got nine videos, you've got to watch all those nine videos to get that one little clip. Or if you took several clips from one video, you need to watch the whole to get the right context of it. You know what I mean? Based on selectively edited footage, yeah. Similar methods were used against Nick the Hat, who was forbidden from having any contact with Kate and Chris people, despite only having minimal communication with them. 
most of it being from me or others in the agency. In these additions to these incidents, I was involved in group chats with Stephen Fisher and the people. One group chat included Fisher and Kate people, while the other included Fisher and Chris people. During these chats, there was discussions related to the case, and I questioned Fisher's claims on social media that he was retained by the people. The communication raised concerns, especially given the ongoing efforts dis- to discredit those assisting in the search for Sebastian. On September the 7th at 10.36pm, I text C.P. Peeful, K.T. Peeful, and Stephen Fisher regarding the ongoing situation. A true and correct copy of the group chat with Kate and Chris Peeful and Stephen Fisher is attached here to as Exhibit 1. Oh, the following day, September the 8th, at one thing, I reached out to see people again to ask if you would like be available on shoes for me to meet dog and the team. Shortly afterwards, at one time, Mr. Uh, Nick the Hat and I had a call Mr. People since the tip line was linked to my phone. A true and correct copy of the conversation history C people and Kate people is attached to you as exhibit two. Oh my god. During the call, Mr. People stated that he would involve his friends in law enforcement, asked for a moment and promised to call back. He did call back, but I chose not to answer based on the advice of counsel as his mention of law enforcement connection made it unsafe to proceed with legal oversight. Exactly. That same day, I text Kate, Kate to people and asked if she was afraid of her husband, suggesting that if she wanted to speak privately away from him, she should reply with the number two and then delete the text. A true and correct copy of the conversation with Kate people is attached to Exhibit 3. On September 9th, I attempted to contact Mr. Crowfoot twice, along with Mr. Chapman, a dog, but received a text from him saying not to call back. There's an accidental pocket dial later that day, but no further contact was made. There's been no communication with the people since that time. Now this I didn't know either. This bit I'm going to read. Even Julia Falenti faced accusations of posing as a TBI agent. This is the dog lady. The one in the arm in the armed forces. The captain or whatever she is. Right? Why would she pose as a TBI agent? She's a captain in the armed forces. Her credibility probably goes higher than the TBI. You know what I mean? During our investigation, we uncovered financial connections amongst our uh, them. became evident that the P-Fugs were using legal manoeuvres not just to protect themselves to but under, uh, undermine the investigation and cast out on those generally working to find Sebastian. That is just... And all because she asked if she could take her dogs on his property. And that is it. And he said no. No, because one of our dogs can sniff out medication, D-R-U-G-S. Now, if there was any medication in that house for Sebastian, he'd have found it. However, if he didn't pick up on any of the medication or D-R-U-G-S, then now is the question, where's his medication? Why hasn't he got his med- Why isn't his medication here if he, if he walked out of the house? His medication would still be here. You know what I mean? If they say, well, it is, say, well, my dog hasn't sniffed it out and he's good at what he does. That's why they wouldn't allow the dog in the house. That's why. Because she just found some more red flags.
During our investigation, we uncovered financial connections among these content creators and a broader network of individuals who were profiting from spreading misinformation. Donations through YouTube super chat and subscriptions showed a significant flow of funds, some of which were tied directly to individuals with vested interest in keeping the investigation off track. Wow. For instance, Tony Mathis, who was helping in the search, became a target of Stephanie Jo True to Ruff, as she admitted to wanting to take Tony down. When efforts to discredit him failed, they restored to accuse Mr. Rogers of heinous acts, even attempting to cast doubt on his alibi for Lingard Sebastian's disappearance by claiming cover ups and fabricate time, time cards at the county jail. It's not just time cards, they had him on video. Oh my lord. Every door he walked through, there was a video, a camcorder, whatever you call it. You're on video all the time you're at work. I'd be, hi, every time I went past one, hi, I'd be waving at the cameras, hi, <laughs> every time. <laughs> My mum and dad had this intercom uh, camera on their house. So they could see who was coming to the door. And when anyone hit the hit the uh, signal, came within range, it would show up on their TV. Well, I didn't know this at first. Then I'm sitting there, and someone, I'm sitting at my mum and dad, so someone comes to the house, and I say, oh, I didn't know it. You had me on camera, Dad. You know what I mean? I didn't know it come up on your TV. I said, yeah. So when we left, I walked out waving, going away from the screen, and then shot back in and gave another little wave. And I kept that doing for about five minutes. And my dad was going potty. He was going mad. We had pack it in. He said, Come out in the end. He said, Pack it in. Yeah, I'm trying to watch some snooker or something like that. And you keep waving. And every time you wave, it comes up on the screen. And I can't see what I'm watching. <laughs> so. Oh, God. But how can they not say he was at work? You know what I mean? Allegations were baseless and served only to divert attention from the real issues. Yes. Such as where's Sebastian? The tactics used in this case go far beyond ordinary harassment. They represent a well-organised effort to derail the investigation and silence those involved. Evidence suggests a sophisticated attempt to distract, disrupt and demoralise Spanish state lines and involving numerous content creators, lawyers and enablers. What would happen? Right? What would the charges be if they came after me and I sent and they sent me threats? Right? And all this law. Yeah? And going on YouTube and talking about me. I'm in the UK. Would that be international then? If I reported them to this company, would that make their charges even bigger? I'm just a small fry. They don't have to worry about me. Adding to the intimidation tactics was an incident at my home on October the 5th, 2024. A white Chevy truck pulled into my concealed driveway. How is it concealed if you pulled into it? That I don't understand. Around 7.16pm, making, marking the first time in eight years since, eight years that such an event occurred. Right. Sequence of events. Well, Toby, shut up. <sighs> I'm sorry if you think in my catalog. Background, 7.15 to 7.16 p.m. The truck pulls into my driveway. 7.16 to 0.08 p.m. The driver notices the cameras and backs up slightly. 7.16.15 p.m. The man... Hold on. Oh, yeah. 7.16 p.m. 7.16 and 15. That's 15 seconds. Yeah. 
appeared, the man exits the vehicle, leaving the truck door open and walks towards the front door. 7.16. He glances through the garage window. 7.16.29. He appears into the dining room window, facing the kitchen. 7.16.34. The man reaches the front door. 7.16.37. He knocks on the front door and rings the doorbell. 7.16.44 p.m. He notices the security camera and leaves. 7.16.50 p.m. On his way out, he glances again through the dining room window. 7.16.58 p.m. He checks the garage window once more before driving away. The driver, a middle-aged man in a black under-armour polo and khaki pants, left his truck door open as he approached my front door. He peered through the windows and appeared to have an MDT. What's an MDT? I'm going to check this. Right, let's see what it means. MDT means multidisciplinary team. MDTs typically include a range of professionals such as doctors, nurses. Right. So saying, appear to have an MDT, a device often. What is it? Perhaps I used MDT. Let's just see what it says again. Device. MDT device, not device. Mobile data terminal. It's a computerized device used in emergency services, public transport, taxi cabs. Is a compact and portable device used for communication and data management in various industries. It is an essential versatile radio terminal that provides real time. Hold on. Real time updates, simplifications, and optimizations, optimization of tasks in the field. Uh, yeah. Let's pull up images, see what it says. So, you know what I mean? So that's what he noticed he had. So... I swear to God, where I sit, outside my one window, I've got to get these people in to sort this out. I've got a great big sky dish, right, that I don't use. It's not connected up. It was dismantled before I even moved in here. But it's bolted down to the, the frame outside the window. Because this used to be an open balcony. But then they enclosed them all in and put windows all the way around, but left the frame in and it's bolted to that frame and the wind is blowing. And I can see that dish coming through this window one day, it'll kill me. It will literally kill me. So, please to have an MDT for those often used. So, to like a transmission device, people you can talk to and things like that. 
mounted inside the truck. Well, he obviously could see that because the door was open, so the lights were off. I immediately called 911. The Pennsylvania State Police arrived shortly after. The trooper reviewed the footage, took a report, and requested that the video be mailed to them for internal review in case other officers received similar calls. Fair enough. We, were, we are working under the belief that Sebastian is still alive and these coordinated deaths to derail the search of doing nothing but harm a vulnerable teenage boy. The time wasted on distractions and false accusations has left Sebastian at greater risk. The individuals perpetuating these taxes, whether knowingly or not, are assessing, assisting in keeping them hidden or even enabling those responsible for disciplines to avoid justice. Well, I just want to check something. We're coming up to nearly three hours. So what I'm going to do, when we finish reading this bit, I will call it a night, and then I'll be back later tonight about 8 p.m. Because I need to get something to eat. And you lot, all sitting here, all need to go and get something to eat and drink. And do what you have to do, okay? So, as part of our investigation, I had access to several phone calls involving Chris Peafoot, Katie Peafoot and Seth Rogers. These com conversations were deeply unsettling. In one instance, just days after Sebastian's disappearance, Kate Peafoot clearly fused made harsh remarks about the situation. What? What followed was even more alarming. Chris for angrier than I have, I'd ever heard, made direct threats against Mr. Rogers and talked about spreading harmful rumours regarding Sebastian. Yeah, and that was what I was going to say. People say Seth should never spoke about Sebastian and what happened to him with the SA. Well, I'm sorry, no one talks about the fact that Chris was holding that over Seth's head constantly. And he said to Seth, he said it on the live, this is what Seth said on the live, he said something to the effect of, you cannot hold this over my head no more. Because people's asking Chris why he, would, he did not want his daughter around Sebastian, Chris said to Seth, if people don't stop asking me about why they don't want my daughter, why I don't want my daughter around Sebastian, I will tell them the truth about your son being a P. And then no one will want to help look for him. So Seth come out and said it. And then he said at the end, you cannot hold this over my head no more. But no one looks at what was said before he said what he did. No one thinks about what that little bit of conversation about how Chris had said this, this and this. All people look at is what Seth said about Sebastian being a side. They're not getting the, they're not looking at the full story. and talked about spreading harmful rumours regarding Sebastian. On another call I was present for, Chris P. Falk declared, you'll never find Sebastian and warned us to keep away from him. So if this is the case, they've been on this case for a long time. You know what I mean? And warned us to keep away from him, his family and anyone connected to him. It's an unnerving to hear such a statement, especially since Sebastian had gone missing after being last seen. Well, I wouldn't say this is correct. Because it says, especially since Sebastian had gone missing after being last seen with Chris and Katie at dinner the night, that night before. And I'm thinking... Okay. Why ain't this working? 
Uh, let's just try this. Right? Especially since Sebastian had gone missing after being last seen with Chris and Katie at dinner the night before. Now, that is that. Miswording? We don't know. However, we have since found out that Chris had four days off before Sebastian went missing. He was off on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So you're telling me he didn't come out once that weekend? Instead of focusing on throwing his steps on Chris, seemed more intent on shutting down any efforts to get closer to the truth. So was Chris there or was he not? Is that just a slip? A mistake? Over the past few weeks, obstacles created by these individuals have forced us to increase the reward by an additional $25,000, raising acknowledged contribution to 75 combined with the FBI 50000 Oh, that's how they got to the $125,000 reward. They've upped their reward. Wow. Exhibit four. Well, when that comes along, I'll be climbing it. Right? So, let's just. Uh, these are just the exhibits, see. Right, let's just see a message from Dr. Bounty Hunter. And he's just asking if they'd retained Mr. Fisher. Right? Right, now, consider this your formal and only message from my wife Katie and myself. Do not, for any reasons or circumstances, contact us in any way again. If you need to can oh, here we go. Reach out to some of your county sheriff's officer. Your buggy buggies aren't they? That's why people don't trust some of your county sheriff's office. Because, you know, if T TBI and FBI want to know why they don't trust, because ask Chris why no one will trust Sumner County Sheriff's Office. It's because Chris is always referring to contacting them. It's like they have his own personal little lawyers or attorneys, you know what I mean? No, I wouldn't contact them. Right, we're just going to go through the rest of this, this and then we're going to finish. Right, that was the text they sent, or phone call, or whatever they sent. And this is what she said, right? If you fear your husband and want to speak in private away from him, reply with the number two and delete the text. Then call this number when you are away from him, from Christopher. We will be coming Tuesday to speak with him. She replies, any communication to myself or my husband, because she'll go through law enforcement, contact them, not us. They're not your lawyers. We don't want to speak to them. Oh, God. All right, so this is new.
Okay, let's see if I can get this took off here. I'm trying to get this out. He's going to let me. No. I have to try and find another way of getting that. Right. So we got to page 204 of 323. I did cut the bit of pet for me book. We are going to come back to this because, as I said, I need to go get something to eat and whatever. I'm sure you lot have all, have all been here. One need to get something to eat and drink and whatever. So please, hit that like button, and hit the share, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. You can now also join and become a member. So I'm just writing down, page. Well, I, I had a feeling it would take more than one flipping live. And this is st still only the first, this is only the exhibits. Right? This is only the exhibits. So I will be back later. It is what, six o'clock now? So I will be back later and we'll carry on from where we left off. I've hit the page down and we'll be carrying on from there. Okay, so I'll be back by 8 p.m. tonight. Yeah, it's 6 o'clock now, so yeah, I'll be back at 8. Two hours. To have something to eat and just stretch. But thank you all for being here with me again. I really do appreciate that. Like my Discord there. So if you want to go over and get these documents where you can sit, where it'll download it onto your laptop or computer, and you can go through it your own, all of it, yourself. Please do so. Right? There's both of them there. The link is in the Discord account. I had to do it as a link because I was going to put each file in there separately, but to upload one of them, I had to up upgrade, and I thought, I'm not upgrading my Discord, I've upgraded my X, I've upgraded my YouTube, I'm not ex upgrading my Discord. So what I did, I was able to get a link, the link that I had, that took me to these two other PDF files, I posted that link for you, and it'll open up, and it'll take to two PDF files, click on whatever file you need to download. Anyway, I am so hungry. You know what I could eat now? I could actually just sit and eat a nice roast chicken dinner with the mashed potatoes. Well, not so much the mashed potatoes, maybe some boiled, because I'm not a big fan of mash. But some potatoes, some roasties, some broccoli and some veg and stuffing. Oh, my Lord. I make my own mouth water here, don't know about you lot. Anyway, so I would just like to say thank you all for being here. I really do appreciate you being here and sticking here with me while we went through this, this document. And I will be back later. So until then, stay safe. And as I said, get yourself a drink, something to eat. I don't know what time it is over there, wherever you are. Right, but here it's coming up to 6pm, so I need to have a break. I've been on here three hours already, so I need to have a break. And I'll be back at 8pm to continue this document. Until then, stay safe. It's